These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. Yeah, you only have a version with the answers? Yeah. Okay. That's, like that's alright, I'm just covering that up. So, according to Hugh's principle, all points on a wavelength serve is a point source of secondary wavelengths for a material body given the atomic constant physical condition of this principle. So, that's the one that, so each point on the wave makes its own wave, but then only the ones at the, the top of the, of the edges really matter that it curves it. Right. I don't know, I don't know, like, in terms of what's happening, like, right. in atoms. Right. Well, for the wave, the atoms are like, nothing's actually moving, they're just like oscillating. So if it's oscillating more, like, it would curve more. Should we go through that? Okay. On my way on. There was a Huygens question, I think also on the, uh, a similar question on the other midterms. Okay, so first of all, we need to understand uh, what Huygens' principle says. And last time we met, I kind of tried to explain Huygens' principle to you with some pictures, but I don't think I did a great job, so let me try to clarify that, so. First of all, we have to understand what Huygens' principle says. Um, so, by the way, this is defined on page 573 in your textbook. So it's a kind of a long definition at the bottom of page 573. Uh, and then the box. So, yeah, uh, so in that shaded box, all points on a wavefront act as point sources of spherically propagating wavelets the travel at the speed of light in that medium. Um, a short time later, the new wave front is the unique surface tangent, unique surface tangent to the forward propagating wavelets. So let me try to go through those pictures step by step there um, as well. So let's say that we have, say, a plane wave. Well, what does the wave front of a plane wave look like? Well, it's a flat plane. Now, let's say this is our before picture. Now, let's look at what the wavefront looks like uh, sometime later, maybe uh, you know, a couple of microseconds later, because of course the light's moving very quickly. Uh, but anyway, although I guess this is true for any type of wave, uh, but we're, we're focusing on electromagnetic waves. Okay, so afterwards, the wavefront is gonna be over here. But what shape will it be? Well, it'll still be a plane, right? This is light. <coughs> you can kind of think of this as light that's just you can imagine that it's composed of a bunch of parallel light beams. You can imagine this is composed of a bunch of parallel light beams. So the wave front here is a flat plane. And then later, it's still a flat plane. It's just a flat plane that's moved to this point on the board. All right. And now we want to see if um, we can explain this in terms of Beacon's principle. Huygens principle should explain this kind of common sense observation. All right, so here's our wavefront, and we were already saying that all the points on the wavefront act as point sources for new little wavefronts. Each point is a point source for a new little wavefront. So let's say we were looking at, say, this point here. Well, you can imagine that this is a source. Oh, but the, these, little, these little wavelets are always spherical. So this is something that's interesting. The little point sources always produce spherical waves. The little point sources always produce spherical waves. So then you might worry, gee, how can the overall wave be flat if all the point sources are spherical? So we have to explain, this would be a good test question. So you have to explain, if all the, point, if all the little wavelets are spherical, how, do, how does the overall wave front get planar? Well, we can draw um, the sphere that this is uh, producing over here, like this. 
course, I can't draw the whole sphere. I can only draw the part that's in the plane of the board. Uh, and then uh, over here, we can say that here's another point on the wave front, and it's also a source. It's also generating its own little spherical wave. And here's another point on that planar wave front. And it's also generating its own spherical wave. And here's another point generating a spherical wave. And another point generating a spherical wave. OK. So we can imagine that each of these points is generating its own new wave. And now then, where is the new wave front going to be? Well, that's the other part in the box. It said, a short time later, the new wave front is the surface tangent to the wavelengths. A short time later, the new surface is the, the, the new wave front is the surface tangent to the wave fronts. All the little spherical wavelets. We don't want to be tangent to those. Well, what would be the tangent to all these little spherical wavelets? Well, if I were a good drawer, it's not coming out perfect, but if I was a good drawer, we'd have a flat tangent over here. So here would be our before wave front. And there would be our after wave front. So when we started the experiment, we had a planar wave front uh, located at this position, indicated by this line. And now the wave front has moved to this point. But the interesting thing is, it's still planar. So again, I think this would, be, uh, this would be a good test question. Even though each of the individual wavelets is spherical, the combined wavefront is planar because the tangent to a whole bunch of spheres that are right next to each other is a plane. The tangent to a whole bunch of spheres that are arranged uh, in a line is just another plane. So yeah, this would be a good uh, exam question. Uh, how can we explain why um, the overall wavefront stays planar even if each of the little wavelets is spherical? Because all the little wavelets together have a tangent that's flat again. Okay, so it appears that we, uh, so overall, we still have a planar wave. So a planar, a wave that starts planar remains planar. It just spreads out in a plane. All right, so this would be a good example of Feigen's principle. And uh, this would be a good problem where he actually might ask you to actually draw a picture. So this is a good type of picture here, how Feigen's principle works. You draw, obviously you can't draw all the point sources, um, but notice if I could draw all the point sources, that would fill in these little gaps over here. And it really would just be a flat plane over here. So you draw um, some equally spaced point sources. Maybe um, each of them is separated. It helps to draw them one radius apart from each other, basically. If you draw them one radius apart, then you basically get this surface. So this is how the wave propagates. This is how the wave propagates. Or in any way, this is a way to predict how the wave is propagating. But in a way, yeah, I guess it is how the wave propagates. All these little points really are point sources of the wave. Um, and then the combined wave is the combination of all of those, which you get by taking the tangent. Okay. Now, actually, this allows us to explain something else that we saw before. Which is that at the edges of a planar wave, it bends. At the edges of a planar wave, it bends. I was saying before that the tangent to all the wavelets was flat. The tangent to all the wavelets is flat. But that's actually only in the middle. The only reason the tangent to the wavelets is flat is because each of these spheres is right next to the other ones. So just when, just when the tangent would have to start curving in on the first sphere, it hits this next sphere and it stops from curving in. And just when it would start curving in on this sphere, it's the next sphere. And that's why we never actually curve in on any of the little wavelets. However, there is no next sphere at the edge of the plane. There is no next sphere at the edge of the plane, because by definition, this is the edge. Let's say that this was the wave over here.
So at this point, the wave front, so this squiggly, uh, this line here is our new wave front. At this point, the wave front is flat. All in the middle is flat, but then at the edges, the wave front, the tangent really does bend. It really does bend along the tan along the uh, along the uh, the spherical wavelets at the end because there is no, no there is no next spherical wavelet to take up the baton at this point and keep it flat. So at the very edges, it really does bend. Okay. 